I've always kept fish uh, all my life. Um, as far as I can go, go remember back, uh, my dad had a pond, um, so my dad's always kept, kept fish, so I've followed the trend really. Um, I started off with tropical fish, and we, uh, then I moved on to Malawi cichlids, then wild, uh, sorry, tank bread discus, then I went then to wild discus, but back in the day, 20 years ago, there's only really wild browns you could get hold of, so I finally got rid of them, went back to tank bread discus, started breeding them, so I had um, six tanks in my mum dad's garage when I lived at home, breeding discus, and then I finally got bored of that and I went into marine keeping. Um, so I got, and then I, I worked in a fish shop, but I never came home with any wages. I always came home with either a coral or a new marine fish. Uh, but I've always, I've always enjoyed the koi. Um, and then the missy says for me 40th, you can build a pond. So I started in the February, even though my birthday wasn't till October. I wasn't, I wasn't letting her get away with it. It's just the colours and the relaxation. It's, there's nothing better to coming home from work, sitting on the patio and watching the fish and relaxing, letting the day's stress just melt away, really. We had the garden uh, landscaped uh, two years ago and there was a certain top area, which after um, the landscape was done, that was always hoping where I could have a pond and then the wife said, yeah. So um, the digger came in in February, because that's, the ground around here is yellow clay, so there's no way I was digging that out in February when it was cold. So I paid a man and a digger to come in. Uh, luckily, my stepfather-in-law is a bricklayer, so me and the stepfather-in-law laid all the bricks. That's one job I will not recommend doing. I, I laboured for him. I was absolutely shattered. Um, I had to bring 400 bit, uh, breeze blocks from the front of the house to the back of the house and then up the steps mix the cement and everything at the front of the house, bring it round. Um, so that was uh, very labour intensive. Then I paid someone to come in and fiberglass the pond for me because it was a job I didn't really fancy doing myself. Then me and my dad um, basically put all the tiles on, did all the pipe work. Um, so I did majority between me and my dad and ourselves. Um, obviously as well when I was bringing all the bricks around, my dad helped, my mum helped, the wife helped, the kids helped. So it wasn't too bad, but it was still tiring work. Um, and then the fish, we finally moved the fish in Easter last year. So I had fish already that I'd bopped and they were in my dad's pond. My dad had a little 2,000 two gallon pond in the ground at the time. So I moved my fish over and once my dad seen what we'd done here is like, I want a new pond. So he filled his pond in. I had to have my dad's fish at the same time in my pond while he had built his pond. So the filter was massively overloaded for such a new system. And I did have a couple of bacterial problems. Uh, I got a couple of ulcers, which are treated on the fish. Um, but since I moved the fish back out, the filters have caught up and they've really coped and it's, it's doing really well. Uh, there's about 25 fish in at the moment. Um, I like to buy them small, grow them on, and then if they don't colour up or the pattern's not as, as I expected it to be, um, I then move them on. Um, I've also got some uh, Japanese goldfish, the Tamasabas, the seven in there. They're quite, they were new in this year. Nice, unusual. I like the unusual fish as well as the koi. Um, I'm not I'm not particularly on the go Sankey with the Kahakus. My favourite is the Sankey though, but I do like like Mkjakus and Migoshkis, things like that, you know. And then I've got a couple more on order from um, Steel City Kai over in Rotherham. Um, I've got um, a Taniguchi Golden Corn to come, so uh, that should be nice. And once I've got this cast off my, my foot, I can drive over there. Yeah, I'd say uh, roughly it's about 70% of the fish in there are from um, the Koi place over in Burnley with uh, Matthew Cameron. Um, I'm in a real lucky area because obviously Peter Waddington's from around this area, who's a godfather of Koi keeping. So uh, Matt used to work at Infiltration under Peter, so his knowledge is phenomenal. If you need any help, he's always there to ask. But also there's quite a few fish in there from Quality Nishigoi over in Warrington. Now I know you had Tim on uh, 
Paul and Tim, they're a great help as well. If you ever need any problems or oh, the fish are absolutely spot on there as well. So that I'm really lucky with them two being so close to me. I mainly use them two and like I said, I have used City Coy as well over in Rotherham. So at the moment I've got one bottom drain in there which goes onto the drum filter, uh, which I'm on the filter uh, drum filter, which then goes into a fluidized bed, which is self-made. And then it returns back to the pond through two return pipes. Then I've got an inbuilt wall skimmer, which is feeding a K1 bead filter. And again, back through two returns. Um, I got my pond build information mainly from YouTube, from Tim's channel. Uh, the information on there is absolutely brilliant. Uh, if it wasn't for that channel, I don't think I'd have built it how I have. Um, then I've also got an air source heat pump on, return line from the bottom drain and UV as well. So I've got a four inch from the bottom drain into the filter route. Obviously this has had to all change because like I said, I used to have a Nexus uh, 310 in here before. So that's why it's a bit higgledy piggledy. But since I went onto the drum, the water quality is a lot better. The fines in the water, you don't very see them very often. Um, like I said, then I made a homemade filter bed, which is plenty of media in there. I think there's around 400 litres of uh, K1 in there. So there's plenty of filtration. And then from the skimmer, through a K1 bead filter, and returning back to the pond. I also run ozone on the airline on the bottom drain. I'm a firm believer in ozone. When I used to have all my aquariums, I always had ozone and the water was absolutely crystal clear. So I, I'm trying this unit out and then if it works, I'll probably get a more expensive unit and then it keep, helps keep the water clear as well. Um, I found out, I saw it online and actually missed the first couple of issues. So I ordered uh, issue number three, it was, read it, really enjoyed it. So I ordered the back issues and then signed up, obviously, and I've kept it ever since. Uh, there's some great articles in there. Obviously, I didn't use them for the pond build because I already built the pond. Uh, but some of the, like the beginner's corner, I think it's really helpful to the, the new people coming into the hobby. Um, and I also, probably out of my price range, but seeing some of the fish, you know, the pictures that they put in there of the fish from the breeders, some of them are out of this world, you know. When, it, when things are going well, it is a very relaxing hobby coming out, watching the fish. Even the wife has been out and sat in the egg chair and nodding off, you know, saying, oh, it's real. But when things are going wrong, that's when you're pulling your hair out. But that's when your dealers, you get a good relationship with your dealer and they will help you an awful lot. You know, I, I can't thank Matt and uh, Paul at uh, Quality and Guy enough. You know, the good thing with Matt is Matt, um, you can WhatsApp him out of shop hours and he will answer you. Um, so Matt's been an absolute real help to me. Ever since I can remember, my dad's had a pond. I think he might have um, said I, I fell in when I was a, like a toddler in the pond. Um, my dad used to have mainly goldfish, uh, but when I started getting more into the koi, I made my dad get rid of all these goldfish and put all koi in his pond as well. Um, and like I said, once my dad saw my pond, he's like, I want that. So um, as soon as we did mine, my dad built his pond, but he had to go bigger, didn't he? Which was, um, which was caused a bit of fun between me and my dad. You know, why do you have to go so big? And so, but yeah, we had a good laugh about it. You helped build it. You have to take some of the glory. This one, just over 12 months. Um, we had one, an in-ground one before this, and then I've had ponds for 40 years. Uh, on and off. Well, it was really goldfish. Uh, I've always had fish, I've had marines and everything else. And then my son got me into koi. Uh, so we did my son's pond now. We've done my pond and we're just feeling the benefits now of uh, seeing uh, the pond at uh, the end nearly. We should have done it years ago. We just had a small one in the, in the bottom corner where roughly where the filter bed is now with a waterfall and it just Goldfish mainly with the one or two odd koi, but nothing like the filtration system we have um, on this pond. Right, we started off, uh, like I say, in the bottom section where the old pond was. Uh, we got some excavators to come and dig out the pond. Uh, and then we've got concrete base with uh, reinforced concrete. 
and then we got uh, the block work all built uh, over a weekend and then we got it fiberglass and the windows put in uh, by Aaron Colclough on it yeah um, and then we did the, the plumbing ourselves um, we started off with a, a Nexus 310 um, but we've just changed it to a, a drum filter this weekend to be honest there's approximately about 25 in at present uh, what I do like to do is get the smaller variety of fish and grow them on and then you can see the development of the fish rather than just getting big fish. I like to get the smaller ones um, and, and see them grow on and then if they've not come out as well as you was expecting you can soon get rid of them, you've not wasted a lot of money. I don't know the names of the fish, um, you know, I know one or two, Kahakus and Kajakus and um, Yamabuchis and stuff like that, but um, I go when I go with Craig nine times out of ten, we go together looking at the fish, and I pick the ones what I like the the look of. Um, it doesn't always matter what the fish is, as long as I like the look of it, and uh, hope it develops into a nice fish. At the end of the day, it's not the cost of the fish; it's looking for one what I like, and. I hope to grow on and get a nice fish. Uh, like I say, we got some of the fish when first Craig first started building his pond, um, and that's why I've got some big ones. But um, we keep I keep to the small toes I mainly. When we go, I usually get about five or six, don't I? Um, and do it that way, and then grow them on, uh, and hopefully go back the next year and get another five or six. Because I, there is room for some more fish to put in, um, but with us just changing the filter, let's get learn to walk before I run sort of like. It's bigger than Craig's, which we will tell you about, because I had to go that one bit bigger. It's roughly four metres by three metres by 1.4 deep. 1 deep depth. All my covers are here for winter. On the bottom drain, we've got a four inch bottom drain which goes into the profi drum. This is what we swapped over this weekend from the Nexus 310. So uh, like I said, all the fines seem to be going in the water. So it goes from, from the drum through the fluidized bed, which she had made at uh, GBR Plastics in St. Helens. And it's uh, pumped back through the air source heat pump. And then it through actually- Through the UV. It, through the UV and it actually goes all the way around and the returns over in that bottom corner. Then you've got the skimmer which is feeding the K1 bead filter which then you've got two returns here and then the other skimmer is basically just feeding the uh, there's a return in the bottom corner and the blade because of the size of the pond I said to him after doing mine I think you need two skimmers to give the the flow so that's why you put the two skimmers in. Eventually I think the plan is to put a tempest on the other skimmer and then it gives it just even more filtration as well. Uh, rather than just circulating water, we've got the pipe work there, we'll put a tempest on. But it is a, a lot better since we changed the drum and like, it's only been on two days. The clarity is not there yet, but the fines are. Um, bearing in mind this pond had PP treatment on Saturday because obviously we put a new filter on, so we PP'd the pond. So um, in a few more days, that this pond will be crystal clear, hopefully. Yeah, and then all the control units for the pumps and the osmotic feeder are all in the cabinet there. 